Welcome back to our live training session here. We're gonna be taking a look in this training module, getting our engine to fire up and run with our base map that we've created in the last two previous training tutorials. So we're gonna be looking at setting up drive-by-wire idle control, making sure that we have adequate fuel for cranking and starting, and making sure overall that the engine's able to hold its idle steady and consistent if we rev the engine up and can come back and return into a proper idle. This is all needed in order to go into the next process of dialing in our part throttle cruise tuning. We can't do any of that tuning until we know the engine can crank, fire, and run and hold its own idle. Now drive-by-wire control is unique for the idle control. It actually simplifies the process greatly compared to working with an idle control motor, such as an idle stepper motor, or a pulse with modulated style motor. We can actually command the throttle blade to a certain angle to be open, and then allow the spark timing to feedback to maintain to a desired idle speed. It's actually, again, really simplistic. We'll take a look at breaking that all down here in this training module. Let's go through and talk about where we're at and then we'll talk about um, what we're going to be doing here before we even fire off the engine. And then we're going to go in and uh, get the engine to crank, fire, and run, hopefully, as everything is in order here with our base file. And then we'll dial in everything as best that we can. And uh, that should be it. So it's going to be a fairly straightforward tuning process, hopefully. Uh, but we do have some things to take a look at and to consider. So let's jump in here and talk about a few things. So first things first, if we jump into our main fuel table, we know in the idle area here, we're putting our values at approximately anywhere between 2 to about 1.7 milliseconds. Now, this may be too high. With the RDX 410cc injector on petrol fuel with this engine, uh, we may need to reduce the values. We'll have to see how rich it's going to be when we get the engine actually fired up and running. Now we have a couple things that are going to be working against us and that's because we haven't dialed these main fuel table values and it idle for a warm engine. So we have compensations in play, post start fueling and warm up enrichment fueling. So we can see here we have our engine temp compensation, that's the warm up enrichment. We have our, in this case going down here, post start enrichment. We don't know where these values should be at. These are a guess. They're on the base map from fuel tech that we started off with. We did reduce some of our post start fuel on the very cold temperature. We also backed down a little bit of our engine temp compensation with that warm up enrichment. They had values closer to 40. I put values closer to 20. We'll have to see how the engine responds when it fires off. Our goal is to get the engine up to operating temperature as quick as possible. So it's usually going to take a couple minutes of idling until the engine is going to be at somewhere between 160 to about 200 degree. Fahrenheit range. We can see that we've zeroed out our correction here and the post start enrichment will be zeroed out at that point. So we'll see in this last couple columns at this eight second interval marker, zeros where we fire off the engine, eight seconds gonna be eight seconds into the, into the actual crank fire and run. We should have dissipated all the post start fuel. That means that we'll be on our main fuel table and we can actually make the editing changes and update that table. But until that point, until we've eclipsed eight seconds and until we've eclipsed the warm-up enrichment table, the engine temp compensation, getting to 140 and warmer, we cannot really make changes to our main fuel table unless it's incredibly rich. We'll have to see how this is going when we, when we fire it off. Now, things to keep in mind, the values in our table here, this is the base pulse width. We add the latency or the dead time for the injector, which comes from our table here, the battery voltage compensation. We put these values in from Honda to K-Pro, these are a starting point. They're probably not exact because my base pressure is a little bit higher on this compared to what I would expect a normal base pressure. I think the RDX 410cc injectors are rated at 38 psi base pressure. We're at 58. So technically these latency values should be a little bit higher. Dead time value should be a little bit higher. But these values are additive. So they add to the pulse width values here. They're cumulative. So they add together. We'll find that the total pulse width may be something more in line with something like maybe three or three and a half milliseconds, which is definitely going to be too much fuel from these injectors for my engine for petrol fuel. We'll have to see how this is going to go. When we fire it off, if it's incredibly rich, I will edit the main fuel table. I'm not going to edit the injector data. We'll leave that alone. I'd expect that the values are probably going to be a little bit lower, but we do need to have some fuel into the table, even if it's a little bit rich, to get the engine to crank, fire, and run and maintain the idle. Then we can deal with it. Again, once it's warm, we can start to deal with our values. We'll have to see how this goes when we fire it off. I like to not edit the table, ideally, allow it to come up to operating temperature and make minimal adjustments. However, we're probably going to have to intervene. We may have to add fuel. I'm expecting to have to probably take some fuel away. Now, we have our closed loop correction in play. 
the closed loop correction will be taking a look at what our measured exhaust air fuel is going to be from our wideband sensor and it's going to be comparing it against the desired target air fuel that we're set which is 14.7 to 1 at idle conditions. Depending on how far off we're from that target, it's going to adjust the injector pulse width. So essentially it's going to make percentage adjustment in real time, temporarily, against our main fuel table values. That's going to give us a little bit of a correction and a little bit of a buffer to get it up to operating temperature. Hopefully, again, it's not so rich that it's just pegging the wideband and we need to intervene. We'll have to again have to see, it, see how that goes. So things to keep in mind with this, when you fire off your engine for the first time, you're not going to know where the fuel's at. You're not going to know how much warm-up enrichment or engine temp compensation you're going to need. You don't know how much post-start fueling you need. They all hinge upon the main fuel table being dialed in. We haven't done that yet. When we fire up the engine, we'll sort that out. Then we can take a look at those other tables. We also have our cranking fuel here, which we really can't evaluate too much yet. We do have values between 14 and 12 millisecond for cranking. This should be adequate. We may need more fuel for this size injector, but it should still allow the engine to fire off and run. We'll be able to test this more effectively when the engine is warm. We can do a, a quick restart and see how the engine starts, see how the engine responds with values closer to about four milliseconds, which seems appropriate for cranking with this size injector for petrol fuel. A couple other things to keep in mind. If we move down here, we have our idle control in play. So within our idle control, recall that it's drive-by wire. Now in this case, we're commanding our throttle blade opening for cranking conditions. This is gonna give us our base airflow when we're cranking. We can see right now our position on idle is set to fixed and our cold idle position is reference and hot idle position reference. This is our cranking percentage of throttle opening. This is gonna be what it defaults to when we're actually cranking and firing it off. Then we have our ignition timing limits that are gonna make those adjustments to the ignition timing to drive the engine torque up or down, to manipulate the engine speed to go up or down, to match the desired target we're commanding here. So at 50 degrees, uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, we're commanding 1400 RPM. By the time we get up to a warm engine, we're commanding here about 950. Let me just go ahead and just make this a little bit easier. I'll put it at 1000 RPM. Let that idle about 1000. And here at 104 degrees, let's put it at 1200. Let's just bump these targets up just a little bit to see how this is gonna go. I don't wanna get the idle speed too low, just to kind of simplify things. Now, one thing to keep in mind, because we've selected this option here, position on idle fixed, our throttle blade opening that's gonna command our base airflow or the base torque for our engine is gonna be coming from our idle actuator position table. This is based on coolant temperature. This is the actual throttle blade opening. So we can see as we're at the cold temperatures, the throttle blade is open fairly large. At the warmer temperatures, the throttle blade is gonna close. Now we may or may not have to adjust these values. When we're telling the fuel tech that we wanna idle, in this case, at our desired target idle RPM, it is not going to move the throttle blade around. We want that airflow to be fixed. It's our job to sort out our idle actuator position values. So in order to figure out how to get to this desired target RPM, we're going to pay attention to where the position's at and adjust our position. And then we can allow that timing feedback to target against the actual desired target RPM here. So it's gonna look at the actual RPM, it's gonna be looking at the target RPM, figuring out the difference, and then it can adjust the timing anywhere from negative five to 25 degrees. It's gonna make its adjustments. Now there is a way that we can figure out what we need to adjust in terms of the throttle blade opening versus that spark timing feedback. We don't want the spark timing to be excessively negative at idle. We'd like to idle about zero to five degrees, ideally on a warm engine. We'll have to see how this goes and how the engine responds, but we will be sorting both of these out. We'll have to figure all this out here in the training module. Now we're also gonna be taking a look at- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.